Did you know that you can dramatically enhance your learning experience with meditation? Perhaps you're into personal development and you attend events and you're a little frustrated and tired because you get high, you get excited, you get motivated, and then you go back home and nothing changes. Or perhaps you do a lot of reading, watching YouTube videos, and the same thing might apply that you're gathering all this knowledge, all this information, and it fills you with hope and optimism, which is fantastic, and yet nothing really changes or shifts. Or perhaps you're just attempting to keep up with the changes in your business, in your industry, and you're finding it a bit of a struggle. Well, I want to honor you for that. It's not easy, that's for sure. And yet, something that rarely is talked about is how, through your meditation practice, you could exponentially change all of that and learn so much faster, so much easier. So if you're a meditator already, or even if you're not and you've been paying attention to the research, you know we know all the benefits for our health and well-being. Making meditation part of your daily practice for 5-15 minutes per day can boost your immune system, can help to normalize blood pressure, normalize blood sugar levels, reduce cholesterol in the body, create that balance, homeostasis, that helps us to live longer, and you combat the number one contributor, the number one cause of health problems and problems in general, distress. I know you know that, I know that, and if you just do that, fantastic. It's well worth it. And yet, there's another dimension to your meditation practice where you can learn faster, learn easier, and go beyond just the mere intellectual know-how. You know, the gathering of information, book learning, and all this knowledge, but what do you do with it? Hi, my name is Ken Kasha. And in this video, I want to share with you some aspects and give you some tips how you can turn your meditation practice into, in addition to your health benefits and staying focused and calm, to a tool to help you learn fast and absorb and integrate what you know in a more meaningful way so that you can actually begin to apply it and experience the benefits and sustain it. Pretty cool, huh? And that's what I've been doing for nearly 50 years. If you know my story, I was a student flunking out of Boston University, and by applying dynamic meditation skills that I learned through the Silver Method, I'm the lead trainer and international train director still to this day because it's such a powerful program. I literally, what? I turned myself around my life, stopped getting headaches, went on the dean's list, I went from academic probation to just about straight A's, studying less. Now when I attend events, I'm constantly attending events, watching YouTube videos, reading. I'm a voracious reader. I love to learn. And I am so fortunate and grateful that I have these dynamic meditation skills that, to my knowledge, Jose Silva, back in 1966 when I went public, was the very first to go widespread globally with this. So I want to teach you some tips on how to do that. So for example, when we read, we're gathering information intellectually. That's just a small part of it. Because unless we integrate it, knowledge without integration, knowledge without making it a part of us, goes nowhere. I mean, it's useless, excuse me, I think those are useless facts. What good is it to have all this knowledge, all this wisdom, if we're not actually able to do something with it to improve the quality of our life, to help the world, to help our family, our friends, our, our loved ones. That's what it's all about, isn't it? So what happens is when we're meditating, we're also, uh, part of what dynamic meditation is real simple. You may be familiar with it. Excuse the repetition. Many are not. Meditation typically is a passive process. Great for your heart, great for your health, great for your well-being, great for the health of your brain. Help to normalize, help to keep us focused. Absolutely. Helps to reset the brain. And all that will help you, if you're a high performer, to perform even better, to get more done in less time, to think more clearly. Agreed, agreed, agreed. However, you can take that same state of being. Because when you're in a meditative state, what dynamic meditation means is you can also 
think, focus. You can creatively visualize. You can mentally rehearse positive outcomes. You can mentally rehearse a needed conversation with the dear one, with your boss, with a coworker. You can mentally rehearse your dance routine, your speech, your performance, any as your sales, any aspect of your life. And it's truly an aspect of what? The mind, body, spirit connection. Surely we practice physically. Surely we have to rehearse physically and do what we do. Of course. And yet when you combine the mental rehearsal aspect, you double the benefits. And that's not me making this up. That's science. That's been demonstrated time and time again throughout the decades. So what I mean by that is when we close our eyes, naturally our brain waves. So let's look at it from this. Several things are happening. When we close our eyes, we are automatically, naturally lowering brain waves in the direction of sleep, alpha and theta in particular, which are the lighter stages of sleep where we can, where typically when we're meditating, our brain is at, excuse me, only our goal is to stay what? To stay focused, to stay awake, to stay consciously aware. And when you do that, you're activating your daydream mechanism, your daydream state. And it's a golden opportunity to begin to define yourself by a vision of your future and to learn lessons you know, from the past, not get stuck in them, not wallow in them, not make them worse, learn from them, correct them, forgive yourself, give yourself permission not to be perfect, and then start what? Mentally rehearsing a more positive action, a more positive outcome, more positive behavior, what you want. And when you do that often enough, once you own it on an emotional level, once it's a part of you, once basically your brain becomes familiar as if it's an old friend, then you'll start seeing you actually living it. It becomes you. It's just the way you are. So it takes a little bit of practice. You do have to do the work. And I can tell you, if you just do this once a day, let alone twice a day for five minutes, 10 minutes, you will see a noticeable improvement each and every day. And when you do it over an extended period of time, the, the benefit just builds up. It's cumulative. So the first step is then eyelids closed, quiet place where you're not gonna be interrupted. Allow a few slow, deep belly breaths. That's a natural antidote to distress that helps to release some of the stress that's built up. And when we're in stress, we go into survival mode. When we go into stress, we go into reactive mode, and that's not what you want. Because often people are operating, there's so much uncertainty today, there's so much, we're being fed from the media, so much negativity, giving so much attention to what's wrong on the planet, that let's face it, it's hard for us to, unless you have tools and skills, to stay in that state. So it's important that you practice this to counter those negative effects. So when you do that, the breathing helps the brain to release the neurochemicals that will help you to feel good, that will help you to feel better, that will help to achieve that. With the slow deep breath, you'll also start slowing your brain waves and you're accessing what's been identified as the so-called subconscious and unconscious state or the operating system. So you see, intellectually, it's just a small part of who we are. It's important, it's knowledge, no doubt about it, and we need knowledge and the logic and the reasoning. However, it's been estimated that about 90% of who we are has been what? Learned behavior, conditioning from our earliest beginnings while in our mother's womb, right up to the present moment, the things we read, the experiences we have, the environmental influences. And that's not just gonna go away, depending on, it's going to take time. You've got to unlearn that. And again, while in a dynamic meditative state, when you create that state of being, it is a golden opportunity to begin to identify. So you need for self-mastery, awareness. Self-awareness, to identify what's been holding you back. What are the behaviors, the patterns that are being repeated, even though we don't like them, and even though we don't want them anymore. You know what I mean. And then, we need to then mentally rehearse. Now, if you're not a visualizer, you can feel it, you can think it, you wanna elevate your emotions. So you wanna, next step is you wanna, eyelids closed, few slow deep breaths, 
and then you want to think some calming thoughts, maybe a place of relaxation, people in your life that you love and enjoy put a smile on your face, a place where you just go to chill out. And then you want to elevate your, emo your emotions by what? Thinking of the benefits, how it will benefit you, how it will benefit, especially extend the benefits to people you care about, to people in your life, for your family, friends, children. Do you get the idea? Of course you do. Then think of those positive outcomes. So if you're attending a, a, a presentation, if you're attending a seminar, if you're attending an event, if you're about to read a book, you want to do this beforehand, thinking about the goals and acknowledging that you want to have thinking, intending that you're going to have superior concentration, superior understanding, and you're going to absorb it. So take those ideas, take those books. Have you noticed how so many thought leaders today are coming out of the woodwork and talking about meditation and their meditation practice. Some of them are new at it. Some of them have been meditating for 10, 20 years. It's been my experience, though. They really talk very little about it other than in their private inner circles. And I'm noticing more and more of that coming out and integrating it into their events. Why? Because it works, number one. And I think also, my opinion, it's safe now. When I started way back in 1971, we had people like Dr. Herbert Benson at Harvard Medical School. We had people like John Kabat-Zinn in the early 70s at University of Massachusetts coining the expression mindfulness. That's just a few I mean, that I'm familiar with because I'm from the area all over the world. But it wasn't in the public domain like it is today. If you do a Google search or set up your notifications from Google on meditation, <laughs> Every day you'll get a half a dozen or more new papers being released, new articles being written. That's fantastic, isn't it? Because there's so much evidence and I think now people feel safe. It's gone mainstream. And you're seeing increasing numbers of CEOs. I can tell you that better than 20 years ago, places like INSEED University, major university in, in uh, excuse me, Europe, and Harvard were predicting that the two most important skills for business executives of the future would be meditation and intuition, which by the way is one of the fortes of the silver method. We basically train you how to use dynamic meditation to activate and develop and enhance your intuition in such a way that you can apply it in your life to make more meaningful decisions. We do it in four days. Interestingly enough, neuroscience has released some papers suggesting that if you, that I just heard and the World Business Academy, one of their recent podcasts, and they're talking about some research released about vacations, holidays, a week, two weeks, and how important it is for our self-care, how it helps us to normalize and stabilize. And yet, meditation proves to be far more effective. And research shows that if you go on a retreat, if you dedicate a day or better yet, four days concentrated, like, by the way, like we do, interesting enough, in the Silver Method, it's an immersion. I do it four days in a row from nine in the morning to seven at night. And during that time, you can see the changes in people's face. They have more energy, they have more color. If they came in with aches and pains, often they're gone completely, the aches and pains, or at least diminished quite a bit. If they came in with a limp, they have more flexibility. They're thinking more clearly. They have more focus. Even in the four days, they notice they're sleeping better. They're getting up more easily with more energy. Let alone as they begin to apply it on a daily basis, how they begin to, as I said, boost their improvement and grow at a much faster rate. So I hope one day you do do the Silver Method with me or one of our instructors. However, this is something you can begin to do right here, right now. So again, eyelids closed in a comfortable place. Uh, it's usually best to sit because if you lie down, you're going to fall asleep. Or if you're lying down, boost your head up a bit, you know, an angle so that you're not, what, by association in that same position when you go to sleep at night. That's why I prefer sitting. The ideal is to get as deeply relaxed and stay consciously awake and aware. And that's where the magic happens. And you can create an, literally an ecstatic state. There's so much research going on. I mean, it's an exciting time to be in. Slow, deep breathing. Think of a quiet, relaxing place. 
Think of some benefits, why you're doing this, how it's going to help you, how it's going to help your family, how it will help you to enhance the quality of your life, how it will help you to be happier, healthy, more at peace, richer, more productive, thriving. That helps to create that elevated state, that state of being that helps you to be defined by a vision of your future. Then you stop mentally rehearsing positive outcomes the way you want to be. And what I would add is this. At night, when you go to sleep, you want to review how you did during the day and be sure to acknowledge any setback, mistake, error. Even if you really screwed up, oh my God, I really screwed up. And then forgive yourself. How? By giving yourself permission not to be perfect. Recognize your humanity. You did the best you could do. Not to stay with it and wallow in it. Acknowledge it and make believe you're a movie director. Imagine going back in time to that event, what happened, the situation, and cut, cancel, cancel, as we say in Silva, and reframe it, redo it. Redo the scene as if you were there now the way you prefer to be. And you'll notice you do this on a daily basis, set goals in the morning, mentally rehearse, get into that new state of being, mentally rehearse positive outcomes for your day, and then at night, review. Give yourself permission not to be perfect, reframe any mistakes, and go to sleep thinking of you, your ideal self. So I hope you make meditation a part of your practice, especially dynamic meditation. It is, you get all the health benefits, all the psychological benefits, all the physical benefits, and you can dramatically increase your learning rate and integrating the material. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to meeting you one day. Remember guys, remember you and gals, excuse me, you are far more than what you appear to be. In fact, you're better. And if you're finding this helpful, please share it with your friends. Let people know. Help me to get the word out. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much.